Now, for as long as I can remember, witches have been synonymous with Halloween, but there is so much more beauty and wonder to it than I ever imagined. So it is with great pleasure that I introduce to you tonight Bridget Barner. Please welcome her. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Please have a seat. It's so wonderful to have you on the show tonight. Thanks for being here. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. It's yeah. a pleasure. Now, I, I guess right away, you know, what everyone's most interested in is how does one become a witch or what's your personal history uh, in becoming a witch? It's an evolution. Okay. There are no people on street corners with pamphlets saying, <laughs> become a witch or, you know have a broom or anything like that. It, <laughs> yes. it's, an, it's an evolutionary process that comes as you discover your power, mm. as you discover that you are a person of power and what that means interacting with the world. Oh, okay. how, you want to, how you want to be in the world. All right. uh, and it is an evolutionary process. Sometimes it takes us a lot longer than it takes other people. Mm -hmm. um, I think I was well into my... 40s and 50s. Oh, is that right? Before I actually, it actually dawned on me. Well, you dope, hmm. you're a witch. Come on, get over it. You know, just deal. With <laughs> Were you doing things that um, you practiced in certain ways already, or things we did? like? There, what well, was there the were sign? signs. What was there the were sign? signs and yeah? symptoms. Okay. I'm sure you know people would have. Looking back, you know, <laughs> you're people right. would have known. So, okay. Halloween was always my favorite holiday. I mm. always wanted to dress up. Mm. I often dressed up as a witch. Mm -hmm. I crash people's parties. I, <laughs> you know, it was an intervention. It wasn't pretty. You know, was, no. I I was always very well supported in my love of Halloween. I loved the moon. The moon. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, that was mm -hmm. when I. I really shone was with the moon and and you can see the cycles of the moon sort of igniting moon, things in you following or? the moon cycles and okay. learning that when you focus your intention to uh, coordinate with the moon cycles mm -hmm. that you can actually manifest amazing things in your life by being really clear now when you say manifestation and you know I've heard that word sort of thrown around and and the moon as well and witches now putting those all together you know I guess with assumption, I would say you do some sort of magic or potions or things like that, but maybe you can give me more of the clarity around what exactly that means when you say you want to manifest things by the moon. Using the moon cycles, when you start with the new moon, for example, okay. new moons come every 19 and a quarter days, as do mm -hmm. full moons. Mm -hmm. um, when you set your intention at a new moon, you want to build, you want to put things out there that you want to draw to you, that you want to build, that you want to create in your life, up to the new, the full moon, rather. Mm -hmm. And then at the full moon, from the full moon to the waning, as it wanes down to the new moon, you want to um, work on things that you want to divest yourself from, things that are no longer working or serving you. Right. So um, you build up and you let go. So there's this okay. attraction and release process. Letting go is every bit as important okay. as drawing things to you. Okay. All of us need to let go of things that don't serve us. Ideas, mm -hmm. people, relationships, jobs, mm -hmm. habits, all kinds of things that we need to be focused on actually letting go of. So that okay. waning cycle is extremely important. So that to me sounds sort of like a spiritual practice. Is that? It, it, Wanna, am I is, guessing? Okay. it is, but the difference, yep. the difference between witchcraft and the witch religions, mm -hmm. if you will, Wicca. Wicca is, um, is actually the, the um, masculine form of the word. Witcha is the female form of the word, and it's wise, wise person, knowledge, knowledgeable one. Mm -hmm. um, but the difference is in with in witchcraft, we don't. Um, uh, um, pray to the gods and goddesses that are out there. We don't worship them. Oh, I see. Because okay. that would be like worshiping the postman. We know he's there. We work with him. But, um, uh, and, and the deities are there, and they're of, of tremendous benefit and great help and great service. But we don't worship them. We work with them. And that, I think, is oh, kind of the okay, difference in many, in many traditions. Not all right. traditions. I mean, there are as many traditions as there are practitioners. So you, you know, that's the other lovely thing about 
working in the craft is that you can make it your own. It is crafted for you. So um, in your craft, you've adopted a couple other levels. I mean, you are also a hypnotherapist and a shaman. Yes. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about how that came to be or how you work with those all together. Well, I think I've always been a witch, but unknowingly. Okay. Um, I actively pursued hypnotherapy. Um, mm -hmm. Early on, I had a sister who could use the help, so mm. I, I practiced it with her, okay. um, starting in the early 90s. But laterally, I was I got to a retirement age, I figured I needed a retirement project where you know gray hair and wrinkles weren't a bar to make in a few bucks, and um, where actually they were provided a little street cred. So I, um, <laughs> I, I got into hypnotherapy and discovered uh, how amazingly awesome it is okay. to be able to help people. I worked uh, more than 30 years in a corporate situation, and not once did I help someone get rid of a childhood trauma or quit smoking or mm. you know do those sorts of things so hypnotherapy is a is a, a fabulous way to help people and when i started formalizing my magical education my witchcraft education i realized that there were absolutely no there there was no um Everything that I learned in hypnotherapy was only supported by witchcraft and vice versa. So there was there was no um, disconnect there at all. And with shamanism too, right? You're dealing with your subconscious. Oh, so okay. So it doesn't matter which which plane you're in. Mm -hmm. You're all dealing with the subconscious, and it's about going in and helping yourself from within, which is extremely empowering. And then helping other people by being you by know, being connected able to, to do self. that. Well, yeah. by helping them get the answers from within as well. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's so interesting. I really find it. It's there's so much to it, isn't so there? So much. To it's it. a huge practice. Yeah. And you're you're sharing these things in Nelson. Um, you have a website. Maybe tell people what where they can find you. I do. I yeah. have. Um, uh, like if they want to get hypnotherapy or they yes. need a shaman. Yes, or, that's right. Yeah, well, there are so many witchcraft. awesome shamans here in the area. So mm -hmm. I might not be doing very much shamanism work here okay. as a shamama, um, <laughs> but I will. I always incorporate parts of that into my hypnotherapy anyway yes. but I do have offices at the Manistone Center on at 507 Baker Street and you can book appointments through me through my um, website yeah. at North Shore shamanism or North Shore hypnosis and shamanism um, the phone number's on there and uh, I don't know we'll flash it up here I don't yeah know. Anyways. we'll make sure um, yeah <laughs> and I will be teaching a course in uh, here at the college at Selkirk College an introductory course to witchcraft starting in March of next year running 13 weeks finishing in mid-June. That's exciting. Very exciting. It's the first time that they have um, ever done something like this. What a liberal college. They're it's letting us awesome. do this and you do that. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> pretty amazing. And that is going to be, um, you're going to be able to register online for that course starting in the, shortly. 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 Okay, so keep an eye out for <laughs> keep that. Keep an eye out. Through the Selkirk website, I'm assuming. Yes, so that's, yes. Yeah, SelkirkCollege.ca. Yeah. And it's a continuing educa education course and it'll be run probably on a Tuesday or Wednesday evening for the 13 weeks. That'd be an interesting way to really learn, like, way more about witchcraft than we can ever cover tonight. Well, yes, yes. exactly. Yeah. It's uh, two hours a week, so yes, we'll be awesome. going through some fabulous things. Fabulous. Now, I understand you came a little prepared for me tonight with some, you know, Halloween, like, uh, you know, teaching me how we can fit Halloween and witchery together. Well, it's Did interesting you, because yeah. um, traditionally witches were not part of Halloween. Uh, that's not it, what, no. I know, it's something that we <laughs> synonymously, that we always think of, you and know? And it's wonderful. Like ghosts and well, witches well, and goblins. How it's yeah. kind of working out is not so much that on Halloween um, you, you go to, you know, witches go to celebrate Halloween, even though I'll tell you more about that in a minute. And um, it's more like you go on Halloween to celebrate witches, which is fabulous. Um, but the original Sabbat that is celebrated at this time of year for the third harvest is called Samhain. Mm -hmm. S-A-M-H-A-I-N, Samhain. And it is actually, it actually falls on the cross quarter day, which in North America is November the 7th. Um, but early Christian church wanted to encourage pagans to come to church. So they made it easier for them to adopt the Christian holiday by 
by creating All Souls Day, November the 1st. And then October 31st became All Hallows Eve evening, like the evening before All Hallows okay. Day. Kind of like All the Hallow New Year's Eve, Eve to That's right. New Year's Day. Got All it. Hallows Eve. Okay. So in many witchcraft traditions, which is consider this to be the new year, it's the time... Um, it's the time, the end of summer, when everything is put away. You know, the beasts are brought from the field and mm -hmm. determined whether they're well enough, hardy enough to live and survive a winter. Um, you celebrate the harvest. Uh, you put your summer things away and you prepare for the unknown. In the ancient days, winter was unknown. You didn't know how long it was going to last. You didn't know if you were going to live through it. You didn't know if you had provisions enough for it. So you really celebrated and really lived with the seasons. This is also the time of year when things are dying. There's no leaves on the trees, the crops are gone, the fields are fallow, and you really start thinking about your mortality and, and that connection that, that we have lost with death. Okay, so um, th that celebration is about connecting with the nether worlds, or how, yes, the veil the, the is very thin at this okay. time of year. So now I've heard that said before. The veil yes, is thin. The veil is thin. What does that mean? That means that the veil between this world and the ethereal world is very thin. And if you okay. need to contact those loved ones who have gone on, or you want to mm -hmm. remember a particular ancestor, you mm -hmm. want a message to get through, this is the time of year to do it. Okay. And, and, and you can do that in just about any way you want? There's some great yeah. ways of doing it. Okay. You could um, do, uh, you know, a Samhain altar, a harvest, third har harvest altar. And I did bring a few little things, if we've got time. Let's, just, let's do, okay. show how you would do an altar. A bring few little in. things that I, I brought today. So this is what's known as the harvest seal. It's a piece of sigil magic to mark the, um, the uh, turn of the wheel. And you see it's got sides, and it's got Hecate's trident, and it's got Solomon's eye, and the Alpha and Omega and stuff like that. So we'll put that in the middle. Okay. Now, I understand north is sort of that away. Sure. Is that north? <laughs> we'll make, we'll make for, for purposes of this I'm demonstration, lucky if I get in the building or get out of it. So. We'll make that the north. So, okay. what I have to represent the north are some bones, and these are some uh, runes that I made out of um, cougar metatarsals. So, we'll just put those in the north like that. Oh, interesting. And then in the south, of course, that's. Um, Represented by a dragon who is a, a sun kind of a guy, warm weather guy. And are you picking these things because of your experiences and understanding them? Would this be something people would learn in your yes, course? Yes, they'll okay. definitely learn why. Okay, why, what, why? why. Okay. And to the east, we have some feathers here. And there's one from one of my chickens. Oh. <laughs> and a, a crow and a dove feather that I found on Baker Street yesterday when I was going oh. to the pharmacy. Nice. And then to the west... Well, you know, it doesn't have to, you know, you don't have to be high tech. These are things that, a couple of years ago, I was in Malaki in Mexico and found this piece of coral. So we'll put that in the west for the ocean. Oh, I, I'm starting to get it. I'm yeah. starting to get it, right? Yeah. Because each direction has, and, yeah. has a theme, right? Okay. So yeah. the north is for earth, the east mm. is for air, the south is for fire, and the west is for water. Okay, okay. I get that. So because okay. this is a harvest theme, we've got a nice little squash there. We'll oh, put that out there. Lovely. And uh, we have a couple of candles here. One for death, of course, because he is ever-present, you know. <laughs> And one is for the harvest, this orange one here. And I think I have another. Oh, yeah, there it is. Another. You know, have, have candles will travel. Now, are you setting this up in your home somewhere that you would see it and use it every day? Yes. Is that sort of the idea? Okay. But I have a cat. You have a, oh. <laughs> and so he, nowhere is safe. Nowhere is, he is the reason why I can't have a nice altar. Set it up, take it down. Set it up, take it down. <laughs> so in the middle, representing the cauldron of all things, I've just put a little, um, his a cheery little pumpkin uh, lighter light thing Thanks. for your, oh, and this is for you. This is a, an acorn. Acorns. Oh. Acorns and Thank you. pomegranates okay. are very traditional uh, third harvest items, Samhain items. Uh, acorns to represent the promise oh, of what lovely. we will have as we go forward. Thank and you. of course, we're doing a little cultural appropriation here, I'm sorry, but um, oh, which needs we, to we have the Ogham runes, which are, of course, Norse runes. Okay. We have the pomegranate, which represents the story, the love story of. of um, 
Hades and uh, Persephone, who okay. she went down. She fell in love with Hades, who was the god, god of the underworld, and her mother was very distraught that she was uh, taken away and searched high and low for her, and it took six months for her mother to find her. And by the time she got back, Persephone had eaten six pomegranate seeds, which means, of course, logically speaking, that the world will die for six months. There you go. <laughs> thus winter. Right? Thus winter. Thus winter. That's right. So pomegranates. And then we're also going to appropriate, I think it is El La Dia de los Muertos, oh, okay. de las Muertos. Sure. Uh, Day of the Dead, these lovely little skulls that I picked up. In, in that culture, there's so much uh, um, respect for that. So. And it's, you know, there's yeah. a, a great deal to be said at this time for connecting with one's ancestors. So okay. we have three of those little guys. Nice. And um, oh. just a really nice um, oh, an arrow hand. Oh, lovely. That was given to me. So by someone that I don't get to see very often anymore. So that's for remembering people who are not, far away. not with us okay, and far away. Sense. All right. So this would be a fairly typical Samhain, um, or could be, made up of things that you have, yeah. your treasures that represent people and, um, and, and the, of course, the directions. Um, and at this altar, you would, or you could certainly say your prayers to the dead. You might want to put soul cakes out here, and I have a recipe for soul cakes that I brought with me. Oh, yeah. So. Like food for the dead? Yeah, food oh, for, for the, the dead. dead. It's lovely. Yeah. Oh, is that for me? Yeah. Oh, we'll do this on another show. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> just, awesome. Just remember, if you want to uh, make soul cakes or do something like this and have a little ceremony for those that you have... Um, have lost over your over time. There are other things that you can do. You can lay a place for them at your dinner table and oh, and so nice. have nice stories about them. You don't want yeah. anything sad because the spirits do tend to, you know, they pine and they get a bit mopey. So you you want to uplift them. You don't want to bring them down. You've made this uh, very easy to understand and almost like a little less scary for us all. Oh well, I think, right? Would you agree? Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for bringing welcome. your knowledge. I think we could talk forever yeah, we could. and we could have another round. But I'd just like to remind people that you'll be doing this um, witchcraft, uh, what, what are we calling it? It's, it's, it's a six-week course? Uh, or no, a 13-week course. 13 weeks. Introductory, uh, introduction to Witchcraft at Selkirk College, continuing okay. education starting mid-March. Wonderful. Give it up for Bridget Barter. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.